Hello and welcome to your enthusiastic game guide. I'm so Dan. This guide will be showing you all the raid loot mounts you can have on farm. Now there are a heap of these stressful little things, so let's kick them off. So number one. So straight to Ice Crown Citadel and straight to the Lich Queen. Well, not straight directly though. You'll have to run through all the bosses first. Unless you use the raid save technique, you can find a link to how to do that right here. The Lich King is an easy one, unless you get punted off the edge. You'll have to watch your feet, let's say. The Invincible's range drops here, and it's a measly 1% drop chance rate. And it has to be run on 25-man heroic mode. Any other than that, then the 1% becomes 0%. Number 2. Flame Talon of Alistraza. And this mount drops in Firelands, from Alistraza. Fun fight this one. A little time is wasted at the start with Mr. Staghelm fleeing for his life. But when the boss does come, click three of the feathers on the ground and just follow and kill him. It's as simple as that. This mount can drop from any level of difficulty, but they're all at 1% drop rate. But while we're here, let's go on to number three, the Pure Blood Firehawk. This one drops from Ragnaros. This is the last boss in here. Absolutely nothing to worry about. You're more than likely going to out DPS this fight, which means you'll get to see some glitches, but that's about it. But even if you have slow DPS, it's still very simple. Again, any level of difficulty this mount can drop on, and again, it's a sucky 1% drop rate. Number 4. Fiery Warhorse. Drop from Atuman the Huntsman in Karazhan. This is probably the best and quickest one to farm, mainly because you go in, turn left, kill and exit. Simple as 1, 2, 3, but 1% drop rate, so pretty much as simple as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, I'm not going to count to 100. I don't need to prove any points, I can do it, believe me. Number 5, the Grand Black War Mammoth. This one does not just drop from one boss. In fact, it drops from four, and they're all in the same raid. The Vault of Arkhaven, in Wintergrasp. Oh yeah, that PvP zone in Northrend. But sometimes you may not be able to enter it because it's being run by the opposite fraction. In which case, you can either log a character of the different fraction, or wait until the next fight. So again, it drops from all four bosses in here at 1% each. So you have a few more stabs at this one for just the one raid. Not too bad, not too shabby, not too bad if I say so myself. Number 6. Azure Drake, drop for Maligos in the Eye of Eternity. If you are level 100, you will kill this boss pretty much, maybe maybe even one shot. In fact, you'll probably DPS him down before he reaches phase 2, but you'll still see all the phases anyway. Kill the adds, then the platform will be destroyed. Attack the boss once on your dragon and then loot the gift. Again, easy to farm. One boss, 1% 1 drop chance, two mount stick. Wait, what? Number 7. Blue Drake. Drop for Maligos in the Eye of Eternity. If you are level 100, you will kill this boss pretty much, maybe maybe even one shot. In fact, you'll probably DPS him down before he reaches phase 2, but you'll still see all the phases anyway. Kill the adds, then the platform will be destroyed. Attack the boss once on your dragon and then loot the gift. Again, easy to farm, one boss, 1% 1 drop chance, two mounts to get, and... Uh, hmm, I've got a sudden feeling of deja vu. Hmm. Number 8, the Black Drake. Drop from Sepharion in the Obsidian Sanctum. But wait, here's the exciting part. This is a 100% drop rate mount. Only if you do it right, however. And to do it right, you enter the raid on 10-man normal mode, and go straight to the big dragon in the middle and kill him. Only, only him. The idea is that you must leave the other three dragons alive to get the mount. Oh, oh, but we're not done here. Number 9, Twilight Drake, drop from Sepharion in the Obsidian Sanctum. Yeah, that's right, we're still here, but this time we're here on 25-man normal mode. And again with a 100% drop rate, if you only pick on the big guy in the middle of course. You'll have to do this on two characters if you want to do it in the same week. 10 man on one, 25 on the other. Number 10, Drake of the South Wind. This one drops from Al Akir in the Throne of Four Winds in Oldham. 
Oh, the, the, the camel place. To get this one, kill the three bosses quickly on the start. First, start off on the north platform, move to the east after, then make your way to the west. Click the whirlwind, which appears in the middle of the platforms, and you're at the main boss. Kill this boss with all you got, nothing to look out for here, then just loot him. Again, 1% though. I'm sorry. Number 11. Anixian Drake from Anixia in Anixia's lair. 1% mount again though. You may complain about all these 1% drop mounts, but it does keep you busy. It's better than fishing, let's, let's be honest. So only one boss in here, in and out. Very simple with this one, kill. Nothing to look out for, just kill. You may get a few adds, but they're easy to kill. You only need to just stand there really, and just hope for the best. Number 12. Mimirin's head. Not drop from Mimirin though, drop from Yogg-Sarin. You could say, Yogg-Sarin is ahead of the game. <laughs> yeah, when doing this raid, make sure that you run it on 25 man mode, and kill all the bosses, with the option of Alagon. There are lots here, so you may want to share a save each week to speed this process up. So when doing the Yogg-Sarin fight, quickly run over the mists at the start of the fight. Make sure that you kill the adds over Sara. Yogg will rise, kill all the tentacles, and then enter the portals when they appear. Once in, kill the adds and the tentacles, then attack the brain in the back room. You'll then be pulled out, and then you want to make Yogg hurt. Yogg hurt? <laughs> Yogg, um, yeah. Anyway, kill, kill him off, loot this one up, but again, 1%. Number 13, Ashes of Alar. Drop from Kelfast Sunstrider in Tempest Keep. Here you don't have to kill all the bosses in here. You can just make your way to the north point of the raid and get the chance of the mount. But at level 100, you won't believe the downtime, so you may want to get your dog ready for a walk. Just in case. But just kill everything and you don't need to worry about a thing. Only the fact that it's 1% drop mount. Number 14. Experiment 12B, drop from Alt Axion at a 1% chance in Dragon Soul. But before you start, run this through on heroic mode. You'll, you'll soon see why. Now this raid everybody loves because the storyline is so long, boring and a waste of time. Try stay awake. Kill this boss as fast as you can when you get to him after all that talking. Then loot the box. I wonder where he's storing that monster in box. Don't ask. It's probably somewhere dark. Number 15. We're, we're actually going to stay here for the Blazing Drake from the Madness of Deathwing. If you need help with the spine, follow this link. It should help you way through. So, wait a minute. This raid drops two mounts? Which is great. Nice little treat. Cheers, Blizzard. High five. So, Madness isn't as mad as it suggests. It's quite simple. Start at the end platform and then work your way across, killing all the adds. When all the tentacles are chopped off, he will then chin slap the initial platform where you will caress his face for him to drop the loot. This mount again, 1% drop chance. Number 16. The Lifebinder's Handmaiden. Drop from Madness of the F wing. No way, three mounts? Oh, what a time to be alive. Now the reason you're on heroic mode is because of this. This one only drops on heroic mode. Again, 1% drop chance, but at least you get two mounts from the same boss after just one kill. Absolutely savage. Number 17. The Astral Cloud Serpent. Drop from Elegon in Mogushan Vaults. And what a mount this one is, hey? Another one which can be soloed. If you need a hand, follow this link. Now this mount drops some either normal or heroic at 1% drop chance each, so choose your difficulty. Again you can share your save if you don't want to keep running it through. When at the boss, make sure you kill all the energy charges as soon as you can, that way you can carry on on the boss. But if, if the game says that the platform is about to fall, then it's about to fall so make your way to the edge and kill all the pillars, and then repeat go back to the boss. Simple as that. Number 18, Spawn of Horizon, dropped from Horizon at 1% in the Throne of Thunder. Little more tricky to solo currently, 
but there are a few tactics. Tactics that can be found here. I don't, I don't intend to do self-advertising. It, it just happens, what can I say? But make sure you click the orb that is dropped from the Dynamancers to mess with his head for him to just run into doors. I mean, why not? That will give you a DPS increase. Do that several times on all the doors and you will have him down. And hopefully maybe a mountain, but I'm not saying anything. I'm not going to say it. Number 19. And we're going to stay here. The Clutch of Zhikun from Zhikun. This one is a fun one. At the start, jump down and eat the food. Fly back up and kill. Simple as that. But it is explained more here. I'm, I'm doing it again, aren't I? It, I swear, it's unintentional. Unintentional. But not only does this boss drop a mount, it also drops a pet. So it does spice things up a little bit, you could say. But the mount is 1%. That's what you want, though. Number 20. Finally, the Corkon Juggernaut. Drop from Garrosh Housecream in Siege of Ogmar. This is a 1% drop chance mount, too. Oh, but it's on Mythic, though. Yeah, Mythic. Currently, as of when this video is uploaded, this one you cannot solo. I, although I could be wrong. You may have managed to work your way all the way through the raid yourself. Then, my man, you are dripping with swag. When fighting, make sure you kill the engineers that appear on the side of the room. They will activate big rolling stars that will do lots of damage and just completely blow you over. After you kill him, he will come back to life. I mean, why not? Take you through to his visions. Whilst in the visions, kill the adds fast and then attack him avoiding his wax. You will then be brought back after a short while where you are free to attack him and kill him again. He will then come back again. But with some purple stuff all stuck on him. It's like he's rolling in a pile of jam or something. But here every ability is empowered. But just kill him. Again. Again. Then he'll come back. Again. Again. And a final phase of his is in a storm wind vision. Watch out for the adds, the firing zones and the stars that are somewhat stalking you. Then kill him again. 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 That should do it. All of that for a mount. Oh yeah. All of that for a mount. A good one. Thank you all for watching. Be sure to check out other guides on this channel by subscribing. But be sure to like and comment. I wish you the very best of luck on your farming missions. But for now, take care.